Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. Keely Reason here, owner of Love Up Adventure, where I help married couples go deeper in their relationship. And today I want to talk about scheduled sex and how to make it hot. Because I hear this a lot from people that scheduled sex, man, it just takes away from everything. And I think it absolutely can. I am not discounting whatsoever that there are people out there that struggle to make sex uh, scheduled sex any fun at all. I think that it can be really difficult. If you just put it on your calendar, like I'm going to go to the grocery store, right? Or I'm going to go to the gym or whatever, but we still have to schedule those things, right? If they don't get on the schedule, then it's probably not going to happen. And um, so we, a lot of times we like don't want to put sex or intimacy on that schedule because Otherwise, we feel like um, we're taking away from the passion. And I'm here to tell you that you can absolutely use scheduled sex as a way to build the passion. Build that time with your spouse like throughout the day. And here's how you make scheduled sex hot. You don't start five seconds before you get in the bed. Scheduled sex is so much more than just saying, we're going to have sex on Monday or we're going to have sex on Tuesday. What it is is sets you up for um, all day long, all week long, all whatever, however much time from the one time to the next, building each other up, having that freedom to flirt with each other, have that freedom to be affectionate with one another and know exactly where it's going to lead that night. When I get up every day, I know where the affection I give Austin is going to lead at night. And there have been times, I'm not too proud to say it, there have been times when the thought of having sex every night was way overwhelming to me. Or having sex um, every so many days could be overwhelming to me because the amount of things on my to-do list were never ending. And so I struggled mentally to disconnect. And I think that for me, I had this problem where I would look at my list of all the things that I had to get done in a day, and what was I going to start knocking off that list? What could go? And if um, sex wasn't ever even on that list to begin with, then it wasn't part of the day. It wasn't part of my priorities. I wasn't like... Um, doing things in the day to make sure that happened. And for sex to happen, for good sex. I'm not talking, oh, let's go spend five minutes together where you know, you orgasm like in two seconds, uh, or maybe the wife doesn't even get to orgasm at all because we didn't spend enough time together for her to even get there, or you know, there's no time for foreplay, we gotta get down to business, whatever. Real sex, very satisfying, intimate sex that you're starting from zero to the next level takes time. And one of the reasons why scheduled sex can be so helpful for a couple is it like shortens that amount of time if you do it right. If you decide from the morning, you know, the beginning of the week, these are the days we want to have sex um, or these are the number of days we want to go until we have sex. You both kind of keeping track in your minds when's the next day we're having it. Now maybe for you guys, uh, it, it would be something where you need to actually write it on the calendar. Maybe you just keep this running tally. We have sex every two days, so we didn't yesterday. We're going to do it today. We didn't, don't tomorrow, whatever. Whatever that works for you, that's how you need to communicate that. And then y'all got to check in with each other somewhere throughout the day. We're on for tonight, right? We're having it tonight. This is tonight. Text your spouse while they're at work. Start that ahead of time. When your spouse and you get together, whether, you know, maybe you guys work apart, so um, you have a little communication throughout the day, send a little I love you, I'm thinking of you, whatever. Um, we're, tonight's the night, you're so pretty, you're so handsome, I love it when you wear fill in the blank. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little note on the day that you're scheduled for sex to get that ball rolling. When your spouse comes home, start flirting with each other physically. Um, you know, look at each other with the eyes, give each other those eyes, give each other the, um, you know, looks across the room or whatever, say the flirty words, but grab each other. Make sure that you are communicating your um, affection physically with your spouse before you get to the bedroom. 
So this, I think, is one of the reasons why so many couples struggle with intimacy anyways, is that they save it all for the minute they get in the bed. And then there all of a sudden is a ton of pressure put on both of them, or one of them. Like the lower drive spouse may be thinking, there is just way too much pressure on me right now to perform. Um, and maybe the lower drive spouse is kind of trying to figure out how to say no the entire day. So they don't even feel this freedom to like let themselves over to the higher drive spouse, the one who is showing all that affection. They don't feel like they can do that because they're like, oh my gosh, this is going to go somewhere and I, I'm not ready for that. I think that does happen to a lot of couples. But when you have it scheduled and you both have agreed this is the day we're having sex this week, however many times, we're going to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or we're going to do Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever our schedule looks like, or we're going to do every three days or every two days or however you keep track, it can help um, the low drive spouse to not shove off the flirting from the higher drive spouse. Maybe they're going to even feel more freedom to flirt because they think, I can love and hug all over my spouse right now and it's not going to lead to something tonight because we have a schedule and they feel satisfied and I feel satisfied and this is very helpful to us. But putting um, flirting into your day is so important. Not flirting with the intentions of having sex, but flirting with the intentions of communicating affection. And so you, you also want to be affectionate to your spouse outside of the bedroom and outside of flirting time sexually. There's so many layers to it. If you and your spouse are generally uh, adopt a mindset of being affectionate to one another. And what does that look like? Hold hands, uh, put your arm around each other, hug each other, kiss each other hello and goodbye. Those are signs of affection. They're things I do with my kids. You know, they're, that's affection. It's things I do with my friends or family or whatever. Not that I hold my friends and family hand like walking around, but I'm just saying like I might give a friend a hug or a family member a hug or, you know, things like that. I'm showing affection. I'm saying, I love you. I care about you. Um, I do other things for people to show affection. You and your spouse should already have that built into your relationship. And then when the days are for you to have sex, be more flirty. All right. Really start beefing it up. So grab your spouse and whisper in their ear something about later on. And you can do this stuff when your family's around or your kids are around. Just have a moment with just the two of you, whatever that looks like, and allow that anticipation to build. So in order for you to make scheduled sex hotter, you have to build anticipation, whatever that looks like to you. So maybe you guys have a sex fragrance, and I talked about this before, that there are, if you will wear the same fragrance or burn the same candle every time you have sex, it's going to trigger your brain, this is sex, all right, this is sex. The same reason why when you use baby powder, you think of baby butts, all right? I mean, it's the same thing, like this is what it's for. So if you have a designated scent, you're spraying for that, so maybe that's one of the things you guys do. You start warming each other up that way. I'm going to burn the candle. I'm going to go put on the scent. Maybe you have um, something that you want to wear lingerie-wise. So I hear a lot of ladies say that they'll put on certain lingerie underneath their clothes, and they'll wear it on the days that they're planning to um, be with their spouse as a way to help them stay excited or get excited throughout the day. And it is also something they can tease their spouse with. Um, I don't know if husbands can do that. Maybe they can. Maybe they've got special boxers they can wear or special t-shirts or something like that. Whatever it is that you know turns your wife on, you can go put that on ahead of time. Um, obviously, you'll have to cover up things that are inappropriate, but not all things that you wear are going to be inappropriate. You know your spouse likes you to wear certain things or do your hair a certain way or put on certain something do that for them. You know, it's okay to slip into something that you know your spouse finds attractive and build that anticipation. All right. So it has to start earlier in the day with the texting. Hey, don't forget about tonight. Are we on for tonight? We're doing things tonight. And then when you get together with your spouse, begin the physical flirting, like the, you know, 
kissing each other or grabbing each other or whispering the things in each other's ears. And then as that night goes on, um, make sure you both are working together to get things done so that you both feel relaxed in time for sex. That is so key. That's, that's the reason why I schedule sex. I do that um, and why Austin and I end up doing that so much is because together we work through everything and we set ourselves up for a great night together. So maybe you're thinking to yourself, this seems like an awful lot of work because we, you know, if we're having sex three times a week and then we have to do all of this anticipation lead up and everything else like that, let me tell you something, you will look forward to it. And the more sex you have, the more you flirt, the more physical affection you show to one another, the more you're going to crave it and the easier it will be and the less like you're gonna have to do. All right, so think back to your dating years with your spouse or maybe your first year of marriage or whatever and everything is new and exciting and wonderful and, and you're like, you don't have to be told to have sex. You don't have to put it on the calendar. It's just happening, right? But then things get crazy with you and I think that a lot of times the reason why we end up having to um, put sex on the calendar a little bit more and be more intentional about it is that all that newness goes away and we're very comfortable with each other so we don't spend as much time flirting. That kind of stuff just ends up going out the window. and We forget to be affectionate to our spouse. Not that we don't love them or ever kiss them or ever be with him or whatever. There's just not that natural like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. I have to hug you and squeeze you this second, right? We kind of forget about that because now we are doing life with that person. We aren't just um, leaving our lives as a retreat to one another. We are doing everything in life together and so it's a little bit more difficult. And if you will focus heavily on affection and flirting, um, then it allows you to never lose that part of your dating life. And that is a part of your dating life that you should keep with you. You should keep it with you. That part where you um, just randomly looked over at your spouse and like looked them up and down and, you know, man, they look good. Oh, they look great. That uh, feeling you have to just, I want to kiss them right now. And not like a sexual kiss, but like just maybe even a kiss on the cheek or anything. This is the way that you keep yourself from losing that, is by scheduling the sex and being intentional with flirting. Be intentional with showing your spouse that you want them. So that's my encouragement for you guys today, and I hope if you have any questions, always feel free to message me, Keely at lovehopadventure.com. And um, this um, video is actually in response to what a reader asked me earlier, so I wanted to do it for them. And I will talk with you guys later. Always send me your questions. Uh, this way I can make sure I'm talking about the things that are most on your heart. Um, I'll talk with you guys later. Have a fabulous Sunday.